uh, dialogues available with Tilt Series. Uh, once you've stopped, and when you're running the Tilt Series, you'll see both the End Loop button and Stop button. The stop will do, do a dead stop, and whatever thing is going on, End Loop will stop it at the end of uh, taking a record image at the end of the Tilt. And then when you resume from the Setup dialog, you don't go into this Resume dialog. It just goes right on to the next action. But the Resume dialog gives you these options for where to resume or actions to take. So you can repeat things in the current cycle, um, or you can take care of things yourself and then tell it to skip them. Um, and so you have complete flexibility about what happens in this cycle of the Tilt series before it goes on. Also, you can actually fix the image in buffer A to be the right alignment and tell it, use this one as a reference for alignments. And this will then replace the alignment images that it's managing in the D and CE buffers that you don't have access, direct access to. Another thing to notice is if you take a new record, whenever you take a new record image by this means here, if, even if one has already been saved, it's going to be, oh, it's going to overwrite the one that is um, uh, already saved. So you don't end up with duplicate images in the Tilt series. Uh, backing up is, is useful if you leave the room, come back, and see that it screwed up five tilts ago. So you can open up this dialog and dial up any previous tilt that's listed here, push the button, and it will reload the record image from that tilt and reload the image uh, from the previous tilt into buffer D so it's ready for alignment. And so this basically recreates the situation that was present at that tilt. And you can actually go back and forth. Okay, finally, just an example of what the log looks like uh, as we start a tilt series. Here is the result of the uh, checking of autofocus, where it uh, changes the focus by five microns up and down and measures the defocus, and it tells us that it, what it could measure was 84 and 98% of the actual focus change, which is fine for doing autofocusing. Uh, now I've highlighted what happens to the focus predictions and, and actions during this beginning of the tilt series. Obviously, we start out, we need both tracking and focus, tracking and focus, tracking and focus. And here we start having our predictions. Um, and we get to this tilt, and it's able to tell us what the errors were on the previous predictions. As I said, and here's the uh, prediction in Z. And also we now have a standard error in Z. Well, the X and Y predictions are good, so it stops tracking. But the standard error is still a little high, so it says I still need to autofocus. We go on to the next uh, tilt, and again, we have the error in the Z prediction from the autofocus. But this time when it does the fit, the standard error is low, and it says it can skip focusing. So it goes ahead, skips focusing and tracking, takes another picture, predicts again, um, and you notice the standard error grows because we're extrapolating farther and farther out from those three points that we measured. And finally, it, it's time to autofocus because we scheduled an autofocus at this time. And uh, the defocus is only off by a tiny amount, so it's quite happy. And you can see the error in Z prediction was very low. And uh, off it goes, continuing from here. 